Hi, Verbling. My name is Michaela. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, and today we're talking about future tenses. Sorry about the late start. I started the class and it didn't register on Verbling for some reason. Mustafa, welcome to class. Hey, teacher. I'll come back you. Awesome. Today is my first tea day. I get to drink tea. It's finally cold enough here because drinking hot tea in the summer is no good for me. So is it a green? So is it a green tea? Yeah, this is green tea. I oh, have okay. all kinds of teas, but this one's green. I think I got it from like a hotel or something. Do you like green tea also? Um, to be honest with you, I don't like green tea. I like black tea. <laughs> Oh, okay. You like black tea. Like okay. what kind? Like uh, spicy or? Mm, no, no. Here, like here, it's different. Like when I went, like I know in USA, it's different. Like the different kind of tea. But here, like black tea, and it's like you put sugar in it and boil it first, and then put the tea, and then you put sugar, and then you drink it. So kind of different. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. It's 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 really popular here. Yeah, and it's a wonderfully healthy habit. But I, I think, I think, I think, I think green tea is more healthy. Well, I think both are good. For me, the reason I started drinking tea was because it helps me drink water, because otherwise I forget to drink water. So I drink black tea and green tea and every other kind of tea, but mostly just because I like the variety. It makes it more interesting. Oh, cool. How about Anatoly? Do you like drinking tea? And what kind? Uh, yes, uh, mostly uh, black tea. Uh, sometimes uh, when uh, I like to change my habit, I uh, started to drink only green tea. But after that, I came back to my uh, previous <laughs> traditional habit. Do you drink it with cream or sugar or lemon or anything like that? Uh, usually uh, with uh, with uh, sugar, but uh, green tea is better to drink without sugar. And I why think. do you think black tea is good with sugar, green tea is good without? Uh, because uh, the main purpose of green tea uh, not just uh, uh, to drink, uh, it is uh, about uh, to think uh, um, how uh, Taste, tasty uh, green tea and uh, it is more important uh, to uh, understand uh, mm, some details of this taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's delicious. All right, Edson, what kind of tea do you drink, if any at all? Me? Yeah, uh, like, I like to drink soda, just soda. Sometimes I drink coffee to to keep alive, you know. But because <laughs> when I wake up early, I so early I have to to drink to drink soda, to drink coffee to to keep alive during the day and in the morning and in the afternoon. I'm a big coffee drinker as well, but I don't like soda much. So because here in Brazil it's getting hotter and hotter, so you know you, you or you need to drink soda or you need to drink beer, but beer every day is not it's not a good idea. I actually <laughs> like cold coffee. I know that's not very popular in Brazil. Everyone looks at me like, what are you doing? But cold coffee, I think, is pretty good. Like iced coffee. Yeah. A little cream, a little sugar. The guy used to used to to drink um, cold, cold cold tea in sul, sul of Brazil. Yum! That sounds perfect on a hot day. Yeah. All right. It's, it's good as well. Sorry. What'd you say? It's it is good as well, but I don't I don't I, don't, I didn't get used to to do it. To each his own. Anna, how about you? Do you drink tea, and what kind? Uh, no, I I normally drink uh, shikori in the morning uh, without is a cereal without caffeine, and in uh, in the afternoon I I drink uh, lime flower infusions 
o, wow, so no o lime, lime blo blossom tea, I yeah. think. In, yes. You said lime blossom? Yes, I, I love oh, lime blossom. It's relaxing. <laughs> Very cool. That sounds delicious and refreshing. Yes. Uh, um, moreover, I drink uh, the lime blossom cold, no, no hot. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. How okay. about Anna? Welcome to class. Hello, Michaela. Hi. Do you drink tea, Rafael, and what kind? No, I don't like tea. It's not, I don't like hot beverages. Neither, neither the cold beverages because we also have iced tea. But I don't like neither. So. Do you drink coffee? No, no, I don't like coffee. <laughs> Just soda? Uh, I like soda, but unfortunately, my doctor uh, they forbidden me to drink any kind of soda. So it's because of because of the sugar. So for you, it's beer or water? What? For, for you, it's beer or water then? What else is there aside from no, tea, no, coffee? No, not beer. Just natural juice, no lemonade, oh, um, juice. orange, and just, just natural. Yeah, that sounds good. Although a lot of times those have plenty of sugar in them too. Yes, but I, I don't drink with sugar. Just sweeteners or another seasoning. Sounds like a good healthy habit. I have to. Right. <laughs> Doctor's orders. <laughs> good thing you're following his advice. Yeah. Natasha, welcome to class. Hello, it's good to see you. Hello. So, do you drink tea, Natasha? Uh, well, I used to drink a lot of tea, especially green tea, because I know that it's really healthy. Uh, it's uh, namely uh, it boosts overall health, but uh, green tea has a lot of caffeine as well. Uh, but nowadays I have really hectic schedule, so I prefer. Uh, to drink uh, coffee, but it doesn't black coffee. I like coffee with milk, but without sugar. I like it, and it uh, helps uh, me to be um, uh, to be more active and uh, energetic. I suppose. So. Definitely, even if it's the caffeine helps, but also I think just like the mentality, you feel like I've had coffee. I'm ready for the day. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> all right, awesome guys. Let's get started. I'm going to screen share the notes, which you can also find on our class page. And we're going to do some quick conversation about the future. I'm going to write down some of your sentences, and then we're going to talk about them later and look back. So if you make mistakes, that's totally fine. Don't worry. We're going to look back at them so that we can correct those mistakes. So let's start on the left with Anna. Anna, can you talk about your arrangements for this evening? Do you have anything planned or arranged for this evening? Yes. Uh, for example, after the class, I'm going to study English uh, vocabulary and idioms. Um, then I'm going to relax uh, looking at um, some English video or upload uh, some post on Facebook. Um, right. Next, uh, I'm going to to play a little, a few a few games um, on Facebook too, especially Candy Crush. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, um, after that, I'm going to to have dinner uh, with my family, mm, and finally, after brushing my teeth. I'm going to the bed to sleep um, deeply. Excellent plan for the day. People yes. are always inviting me to play Candy Crush, but I've never tried it. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> but it's addicting too. No, no, not at all, because I, I don't, I don't. Uh, play uh, every day, <laughs> only mm -hmm. when I have enough time. Mm -hmm. So your only addiction is English then? 
Uh, English is my 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 best addiction. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Anna. Anatoly, will you also give us some arrangements or plans for the evening? Anything? Like mm. For me, is now uh, 9 p.m. and. Uh, Arrangements. If I can uh, uh, say uh, that it is <laughs> arrangement well, with my family. <laughs> uh, imagination uh, arrangement for this evening could be uh, to meet, uh, to have conversation uh, with uh, interesting people um, about uh, something uh, which is new. Are uh, interesting. Awesome. I'm glad you're here to have interesting conversations with us. Yeah. All right. Edson, do you have any arrangements for this evening? Or if it's already late for you, because it might be, uh, tomorrow evening will work just as well. Uh, after class today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for a walk in and then I'm going to go back home. Study English, have a dinner with my my mom, and then just a little break. And after, I'm gonna continue studying English because I need to I need to finish the reading, mm -hmm. reading part. Because I'm studying for I'm studying for some tests like TOEFL and GRE, and then the. Um, mm, Later tonight, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch a series called Person of Interest. Cool. And then and then I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna sleep. Awesome. Thanks, Anatoly. Or oh, sorry, Edson. Wrong one. All right. Let's get one more on this before we move on to the next one. Mustafa, will you give us any arrangements for this evening or next evening? Or next evening. <laughs> Perfect. You said you. Oh, you, you said next evening also, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. To be determined, to be honest with you. Um, everything is, as, as Andrew said, like up in the air. So, um, I might, uh, oh, okay, uh, I scheduled uh, some class with you today, mm -hmm. evening. So, after this class, I, I think like uh, two or three classes, um, I'm going to try to attend it. Um, otherwise, like after I attend this classes, it would be too late, and I'm gonna head to my bed and sleep for my next day. So that's it. All right. Thank you very much, Mustafa. And Ken, welcome to class. Yes. Hello. Good to have you with us, Ken. We're talking about the future, and I'm going to record a couple of your sentences so that we can look at them later for any mistakes. The current topic, we're going to move on to the next one. So your intentions for the rest of the year. You've got a couple more months left in 2015. Do you have any intentions to complete anything before the new year? Mm, nothing special. Uh, status quo. Yeah. Status quo. So just kind of yeah. keep up the normal? Yeah. All right. Good enough. Well, it's good to have yeah. you here, Ken. Thank you. All right. Natasha, how about you? Any intentions for the rest of the year? Any goals to finish before 2016? Natasha, are you there? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, could you repeat your question one more, please? Sure. Do you have any intentions for the rest of 2015? Any goals that you're going to complete or something you want to do before the new year? Uh, well, uh, uh, well uh, to be honest, I really uh, haven't something uh, a real intention or something specific intention. I want to be with my family, have a good rest, uh, and uh, yes, I have um, and dream. I really like uh, hot weather and hot countries, and uh, maybe we will have the opportunity to go uh, somewhere uh, we, uh, where uh, where hot <laughs> hot weather and maybe ocean. Uh, and uh, I would like to stay there maybe for one month, maybe and have a lot of fun. <laughs> 
So, but really, we have something special, uh, special thinking about this uh, at this moment. Awesome. So you plan a little bit of vacation. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I um, I think that I will uh, have a long vacation. It uh, will be uh, this uh, summer, so I suppose that I will have time go there uh, uh, for vacation, something uh, um, uh, uh, something interesting. But I don't. Uh, I uh, we don't think about uh, these uh, uh, so serious. Cool. Well, that sounds like a nice plan for the rest of the year. Yeah. Rafael, how about you? Any plans or intentions for the rest of the year? So far, just to improve my English and just to, to study the most I could because I have some plans for next year, take some certifications and... Um, what kind of certifications? Uh, I'm planning to take the IELTS test and also some certificates related to my job, to my to my profession. And uh, I'm planning to start a new course, a new post graduation course to to in my area. So that's why I have plans so far. I don't know things might change. Things might change um, before the end of the year, but I don't know. So I'm still thinking on it. On it. All right, you got to work hard then. Yes. <laughs> All right, thanks, Rafael. We've got one more that I'm going to get a few responses to. The next one is your predictions for the planet in 2020. This time, I'm going to take a few volunteers. Does anyone, shout it out, have a prediction for our planet in the year 2020? That's actually coming really close. That's only like four years away right now. So how do you think 2020 will be different than today? Uh, can I teach it? Go ahead. Okay. Mm, in my opinion, uh, it's uh, probably that in 2020, uh, 2020 mm -hmm. uh, we live uh, on the moon or, or, or we live on, on the other uh, planet. Uh, maybe um, we won't have to to cook. Only we we'll <laughs> take some pills uh, per day. Um, so it's going to be pretty futuristic. <laughs> yes, it's a joke. Uh, <laughs> certainly, uh, people uh, will not have to work uh, because robots uh, will do all housework. Um, in other aspects, um, there will be uh, robots uh, for elderly care, maybe. Very cool. Yeah, I've heard a little bit about that. Uh, I think I saw a little bit about that in Japan happening right now. They're preparing to have uh, robots take care of people. Yes. Interesting idea. Yes. <laughs> All right. Does anyone else have a plan for 2020? or the future. I just changed it for the next class, but we'll talk about 2020. Maybe in 2030 we will, we will live in, in on Mars because we are going to we are going to start a civilization there. And it's going to it's no longer going to be uh, Earth we we will, we will we will stay here. We will develop some construction buildings and the life on, on Mars is going to be able to do that. Awesome. Good prediction. Anyone else want to shout out a prediction? Yeah. I, I want to say that um, I don't, I don't want to be like uh, an optimistic or non -op not optimistic person, but uh, I think the world going to be... <laughs> More violence, I guess, because of the war. I don't think this is like ending soon. I hope it would, like, it would be like a progress in this like war. So it would be, but I think like war take time. You know, like you need time to overcome this situation. Uh, about like technology, I think that technology we will witness, or we wait, we would witness like uh, progress in technology. And as uh, I agree with Anna. Like when she said, like about the port or something like that. But you know what? Like this is like has a disadvantage for the blue-collar jobs. Like 
it's gonna eliminate the blue collar jobs and you know they a lot of people gonna be laid off because of that because the machine gonna take their job instead of them so this is like um it's kind of negative thing about it so mm -hmm. yeah this is my opinion i don't want to be the not op not optimistic or something like this but <laughs> but really like yeah yeah, but it's really like the world is really a big, big, uh, a big point in the, in this century, at least. Because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the terrorists and the wars. Yeah, it's hard to feel optimistic sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you see, like last time, a uh, Russian plane crashed in the air, 31,000, I don't know, something like that feet, and they crashed. So it's really hard. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Anyone else have a prediction for the future? Okay. I think. Uh, go oh, ahead. sorry. Go no, ahead. No, go ahead. Lady first. Oh no! I was just gonna say uh, if no one else had one that we would move on, but go ahead um, and give us yours. <laughs> okay. Uh, my prediction about traveling. I think. Uh, in 2013, it was it will be more affordable for uh, normal people, not uh, special for rich people. Uh, I expect that uh, uh, prices uh, for fly uh, for uh, aircrafts could be uh, um, low than uh, now. And uh, uh, we will be able to uh, to reach uh, Australia, for example, from Europe, uh, even Antarctica, Arctica, Arctic, Antarctic uh, could be reachable for us. I would love that to be true. That would be excellent. That's a pretty good prediction. I like that one. I'm going to put all of our um, answers or the answers that I copied down into the chat box. I numbered them one, two, and three. So your arrangements were number one, intentions number two, and predictions number three. And then when we go on and do a little more practice with the rules, we're going to come back and assess if there were any mistakes made in these sentences. So let's get started with the rules. There aren't that many, and Sometimes it can be a little difficult to tell the difference between them, but in the end, it's good to remember that these are sort of general rules. If you can remember them, wonderful, but it's also not a big deal if you mix them up or make a mistake. They're not like hard and fast, and people will still understand you, even if you just use one of these all the time. So let's read them. Um, the first two tenses that we use in, this sim in the future are the present simple, and going to plus infinitive. Uh, Rafael, will you read those two, the events when we use those? Present simple. Timetable events, example, TV program or train departure. Going to plus infinitive. Predictions, when you can see the evidence. General future intentions, not arranged. Decisions already made. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Natasha, will you read the next two, present continuous and will plus infinitive? Yes, of course. Present continuous, personal arrangements, uh, will plus uh, infinitive predictions based on, uh, uh, on no evidence, uh, decisions made at the time of speaking, promises, and uh, offers, refusals. Thank you very much. So these are the four we're going to work on right now. They're the most common for the future tense. Simple present, going to plus infinitive, present continuous, and will plus infinitive. They're used slightly differently or in different contexts, and they make the future a very subtle thing. So I can say exactly how I feel about something in the future, whether I have evidence or don't have evidence or if it's a decision I'm definitely sure of, or if it's something I'm a little less sure of, it gives us a lot of freedom and creativity to give information subtly. So we're going to practice this a little bit. 
And the first thing we're going to do is make some sentences. Do you guys have any questions on when we use each of these before we try this out a little bit? Do you guys want to see some examples before we try out our own? No, 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 just not, not, not like an example, but the first one, you, you know, like present sample. So is it related to the future or just yes. a fact? Yes, no. It, well, it's a fact, but it's a timetabled event. So if you're talking about when you go to school, I always start school in the August. You might, you might say um, school starts in August. And right now, August is many months in the future, but we're going to use the simple present because it's a timetabled event. Oh, okay. Thank you. Awesome. Any other questions? Sometimes people get a little tripped up on present continuous with personal arrangements. That would be something that you don't actually have to ask anyone about. So it's a little bit different from um, decisions already made, which would probably be something that requires another person or see what else. Yeah, so a personal arrangement would be something like taking a shower or cleaning your room, something that doesn't really require plans in advance or anything like that. So let's try a few of these. I'm going to ask each of you to make two sentences and put them in the chat box. Anna, will you try present continuous for personal arrangements and will plus infinitive for a prediction based on no evidence? Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, go you ahead. Are, ah, okay. So you're gonna write uh, those sentences and take a little bit of time and put them in the chat box. Yes, a personal arrangement. You you told me. Yes, a personal arrangement and also will infinitive for prediction based on no evidence. Okay. Cool. Um, mm. Thanks, Anna. I'm gonna give yes. a couple other student sentences and we'll come back. Yes, uh, mm, uh, I I have to say uh, to say or, or write, write them down. in the chat box. Ah, okay. That way you can have a little bit of time to think. All right, Anatoly, will you give us a decision made at the time of speaking, which would be a will infinitive, and also going to plus infinitive for a prediction when you can see the evidence. Mm -hmm. All right, Edson, give us a present simple timetabled event and a going to plus infinitive general future intention that's not arranged yet. All right, Mustafa, give us a promise using will plus infinitive and going to plus infinitive for a decision already made. Natasha? How about a present continuous personal arrangement and an offer or a refusal using will plus infinitive? Okay. okay. And Rafael, give us a prediction when you can see the evidence and a prediction when there is no evidence. So you're going to use going to plus infinitive and will plus infinitive. I'll give you guys a couple minutes to work on them and as you're finishing them up, Put them in the chat box. Once we get a couple, I'll start reading them and we'll talk a little bit about them. All right, we've already got a few, so let's get started. I'm heading to the barber later is a perfect example of a personal arrangement. He doesn't really need to consult anyone as long as he doesn't need an appointment for that, so present continuous works well. And that's a good example of how you might see more information based on what tense the person is using. So if a person says, I'm heading to the barber later today, it already tells you that it, they probably have not made an appointment for this. It's probably a spontaneous thing. It's a personal arrangement and they probably haven't consulted anyone else. But if they changed it to say something like, 
I'm going to the barber today, you might know a little more that they already have an appointment or they're more confident, they've already told people about this. So it changes the information we get a little bit. Next sentence I see. Both my husband and I were going to London next summer. So we've got two subjects here, which is a little bit redundant. We can leave the we or the we off. You can say both my husband and I are going to London next summer, and that would be perfect. Mm. Nice okay. sentence, Anna. Okay, teacher. Uh, yes, I make a mistake. Yes, thank you. Just a little one. Good sentence. Thanks. Today is a sunny day. Tomorrow will be raining. All right. And is that a prediction based on no evidence or a prediction based on evidence? No, 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 evidence. no evidence. Yes. Good. Yes, exactly. Because you can see today there's no rain. So why would you predict that tomorrow there would be rain? We don't know. Maybe you have your own special reasons. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I will be traveling abroad next year in January, not on January, but good sentence. And Edson, was that meant to be a not arranged general future intention? Or was that a decision already made? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? So what was your prompt for your sentence? You yeah, you will for a decision made at the time of speaking. Yep. Okay. So if you absolutely hadn't thought about your plans for next January, then you might spontaneously say that, even though you haven't arranged anything. It's the first time you thought of it. It's possible. So, like we can see, that sentence could fit under a few different categories here. But because mm -hmm. of the way you used it, we know that you don't have any arrangements yet, and it's a spontaneous decision that you haven't put a lot of thought into. All right. Awesome. The sky is clouded. It's going to rain. That is a perfect prediction with evidence. It's going to rain. All right. I will have dinner with my mom. So let's see. Promises? Is that a promise, Edson? Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Well done. So you're promising someone that you'll have dinner with your mom. Maybe your dad says, oh, your mom's so lonely. And you say, oh, I will have dinner with her. Promise. Okay. All right. It's going to be raining this evening. All right, so you have some kind of evidence, and you might say that. Perfect. And I'll be there at 8 p.m. Excellent. You hadn't thought about it before, but you just decided. 8 p.m. is the time. Perfect. Thanks, Anatoly. Thank you. I'm going to meet you in the evening, so I will offer you go to the theater. Hmm, the second sentence is a little bit problematic. Why? Well, first of all, we have a slight verb problem. I will offer you... What are you trying to say? Are you trying to invite someone to come with you? Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's maybe a suggestion that uh, uh, we, we can go to the theater, for example, after our meeting. Okay, so maybe if you wanted to use an offer, to invite someone somewhere, you might say, I will give you a ticket. Aww. The way you put it is OK, but offer, you have to have a thing. So you could say, I will offer you a ticket. But it kind of it's funny if you say that, because if you explicitly use the word offer, it the offer becomes a little bit strange. Like offer oh. would be used to refer like, oh, I offered her a ticket, but she said no. But when you're going to offer someone, you might say something like, I will give you my extra ticket. Of course you should come with me. Okay. Okay, I see. Thank you. All right. I will start my 90-day journey challenge from tomorrow. Good sentence overall, but there's a couple little problems here. The first one is that 
Here, the word day actually describes journey. It's a 90-day journey. So we don't use S. And this, I talked to another student about this recently. You only pluralize days if it's being used as a noun. But here it's not. It's an adjective because it comes directly before the noun journey. Journey is our noun here. And 90 day describes journey. So we're not going to put an S on that. So we'll it's like, a, so because it's an adjective, so we don't have to need to add S, right? Exactly. You might say a 12 hour trip or a, I don't 90, know, 13 night So 90 year old, so how can I say it? Like 90 years or? No, no, no S on that either. So it would be a 90-year-old woman or a 40-year-old man. But no S on that. That's another common mistake. You're right. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because also, also an adjective. So 90-year, what? Is noun or what? So the oh noun there would be woman or man. So 90-year-old man. So year would not be with an S on it. Oh, okay. Excellent. It's always good to go over those things because that's something a lot of students have trouble with. And we don't need the preposition from there. So I will start my 90-day journey challenge tomorrow. Yeah, no, no preposition there. What is your 90-day journey challenge, Mustafa? Um, just detecting. <laughs> oh, <okay>. no, no. <laughs> yeah, just, just an example. <laughs> Being creative. Cool. All right. Um, all water reservoirs will finish not later than 2045. Okay, so finish is actually, it's a good, great sentence. I love the prediction. Um, finish is not a super good word. You might want to say will be empty or depleted, will be depleted. But finish doesn't work really well. We usually don't use finish for when we're out of something. We usually would say, um, out of water. So that would be a, an example where the Latin root doesn't work really well. We would use a phrasal verb or just a different verb in general. Next up, I have to go. Thanks. Oh, that, is that an example of a sentence or did he just, he just left? All right. Well, Edson, thank you for your participation. We'll see you later. Would you like to drink some coffee? Yes, I love that one. Would you like to drink some coffee? So that was kind of an interesting one because it uses would, which is a conditional. It is a very polite offer, but we can use will the same way. You can say something like, will you drink coffee? Or will you take this seat? Or um, will you be staying for dinner? So if I say, will you be staying for dinner, it's clear I'm offering you an invitation to dinner. It's different than if I said something like, uh, are you going to stay for dinner? And then I'm asking, have you already made the decision? Um, let's see. I wish the war will end by the end of 2015. All right. That's, it's a good sentence, and I like it. But because we have the I wish there, it's a little bit conditional sounding. So it ends up being a little funny. If we left that off, you could say the war will end by 2015. That's a better prediction. And it, we take off I will or I wish because it, that makes it a little bit more conditional than a prediction. And I guess you can stay. Huh? Dry it out. What do you mean, Mustafa? Uh, like the sentence of Rafael. Oh, yeah. So can, can we say it? Um, yeah. You could say that. I guess it would be more like we, though, because the reservoirs are for all of us. So it would be like a plural, a plural object there. I guess we'll have to stay dried out. Unfortunately, life needs water, so hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> hopefully we won't run into that problem, but maybe. And the last one I see in the Burbling chat box before I go check the Google chat box, I have to pick up my sister at 5 o'clock at the airport. Interesting one. I like this sentence, although it's, it uses a modal verb. So this isn't strictly the thing we're talking about today, because I have to and I need to. This is something I was going to point out uh, later in class, but when we use a modal verb, 
it sort of changes things. And you can use a lot of modal verbs to talk about the future. And we'll, there are lots of entire classes we could have on modal verbs because they're super complex. But modals are a great way to talk about the future, even though they're not strictly any of these tenses. All right. Let me check the Google chat, see what we have here. Just a couple. Oh, we already read those. Those were in the verbling chat as well. OK. So let's go on. We looked at all of our rules. We came up with some examples. Now we're going to look at some of these sentences. Let me make this a little bigger. We're going to look at these sentences. And we're going to talk about the form and why we use it. So here's a list of 11 sentences, and they each obviously use one of the tenses we talked about, going to plus an infinitive, will plus an infinitive, any of the ones we used up top. What I want you guys to do is look at this sentence and decide if you think that that's the best way to say it, or if it's not, and explain to me why. So you might say, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense because He's not making a prediction, or his prediction is based on evidence instead of no evidence. So you guys have to assess. You're going to try to basically correct. A lot of these sentences can be justified, but you have to tell me why it's possible to say it this way or it's not possible to say it this way. All clear? It's a little bit small, huh? I should make this a little bigger. There we go. That's better. Right? Wait. I could even go a little bigger. Okay. So, Rafael, will you read number one for us and tell us if you think it's correct the way it is or not? I'm going to eat at my friend's house this evening. I think it's correct because uh, it's going to plus infinitive. Uh, it's uh, it's based on based on the plan. It's, it's so. Do you think it's like a prediction made. or a decision? It's a decision already made. It's going to yeah. plus infinitive. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Number two, Natasha. Uh, look at uh, that man on the roof. He will fall. It's prediction, uh, so I suppose that it's correct sentence. Okay, so you think it's a prediction based on no yes. evidence? Uh, yes, I suppose. Okay, it's possible. So this might be a situation where you're looking at a man on the roof and he's totally stable, but maybe you're just you're afraid of heights, so it makes you nervous to see people that high and you think, oh my gosh, he'll fall. That would be a prediction based on no evidence. If we wanted to make a prediction based on evidence, how would we change that sentence? So maybe the guy is unbalanced and he looks like he's going to fall off, and you can see the man looking like he's going to fall off. Then how would we change it? Uh, well, in this case, uh, uh, he will be going to fall. Yes, but without the will. So you might say, he's going to fall. And that is a really another good example of how it changes the meaning. So if I was walking with a friend, and my friend said, look at that man on the roof, he'll fall, I would turn to my friend and go, no, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. He's fine. But if I, we were walking and my friend said, oh my gosh, he's going to fall, I would be like, ah! because that makes it means it, it's much more serious if they can see the evidence than if they can't see the evidence. So that's another subtle change in meaning. All right, number three, Mustafa. Okay, these black clouds tell me it's gonna be it's, okay. It's gonna it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. It's going to rain. Hmm. So he predicts. So it's prediction based on evidence. So, <laughs> I don't like it. Okay, it's going to rain. Yeah, it's cool. It's fine. I like it. Yeah, it's correct. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Number four, Anatoly. Okay, the train will leave at 7 o'clock. 
uh, I think we need uh, to use uh, present simple here. The train leaves at 7 o'clock. Yeah, uh, that would definitely be a more common construction to say the train leaves at 7 o'clock. Now, what if I said the train will, will leave at 7 o'clock? What do you think I might mean by that? Why would I choose to use will instead of the more traditional present simple? Uh, it could be prediction, predictions. So that would be a prediction based on no evidence? Why would I say it leaves at 7 o'clock if I don't have any evidence? Oh, no, 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 maybe a different one. Uh, I would maybe, like, maybe, maybe say it could promises. be a promise. So if I set up a situation where that might be possible, it would be something like this. Maybe the train always leaves late, and I go to the desk to complain. I say, it's not fair, I have to be somewhere at 7.30, this train always leaves late, and I'm angry. And the person at the desk might go, don't worry, don't worry. The train will leave at 7 o'clock. So they're promising me. They're saying, I know it hasn't been like this, but today I promise you it will leave at 7 o'clock. So it's possible to use it that way, even though you're right that it's not a very common construction, and we almost always would say the simple present here instead of the will. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. And I go ahead and do number five. Um, yes, uh, next uh, Sunday I will play golf uh, with uh, Bill Clinton. Mm, well, I think it, um, it would be better or more correctly uh, with uh, going to uh, because it's uh, a decision already made. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm, only in case uh, it would be a decision made at the time of speaking is when it uh, could be uh, with a uh, will plus infinitive. Yes, excellent. So this one's funny because if you say it this way, it's kind of like you're you can't really decide that you're going to play golf with Bill Clinton. He's the kind of guy you would need to make arrangements with. It's not like, unless you're his mom or like brother or something, you probably need to already talk to him about those kinds of plants. He's a very important and very busy guy. So you, you're not just going to call up Bill Clinton and be like, oh, hey, yeah, you want to go golfing right now? Let's do it. So you're right. You're totally right. We would need to change that one. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're going to pause this and come back to it if we have time, and we're going to go to the sentences we made earlier. So those are in both chat boxes all the way up. I can also copy-paste them again just so you guys can see them further down. And we're going to talk about whether these were appropriate or not super appropriate and why. So the first one, let's go all the way back up to the exercise. The first one was arrangements for the rest of the weekend. Arrangements. So what tense now do you guys expect we're going to use for these arrangements? What do you think is going to be the most common tense we see when we're talking about some kind of arrangement for the evening? Uh, present continuous. Present mm. continuous is a very strong possibility. Yes. Yeah, personal, by, by the way. Going to, I think. Um, yeah, so going to would work really well. Also, if it's like a decision already made, maybe you talked to someone about it already. So it's going to plus infinitive would be good. Present continuous would be good. Uh, simple present and will plus infinitive will be much less common. So let's look at what we said. We have, after the class, I'm going to study idioms. What do you guys think about that sentence? Should we change it, or is it totally correct the way it is? No, it's correct. Everyone thinks um, the same? I think uh, it is the right sentence, the right construction. Mm, yes. Okay. It, depends, it depends on her, by the way. So if she made, if she made the decision already, or, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. But 
Honestly, I think if I were going to say this sentence, I probably would use present continuous and not going to plus the infinitive. It does depend on her, and this is not an incorrect sentence, but the reason that I would use personal arrangement is because usually studying is something you do by yourself. It's a totally independent thing, and a decision already made would be something where you've already kind of planned. You've got plans or... Um, You've already maybe talked to someone, so if you're going to like a study group or you have arranged to have special quiet time, so you've already told people about it, decision already made would be more common. But if it's just a simple, you're like, oh, maybe I'll go study later, you would probably use the present continuous and say, oh, later I'm studying, so I, I can't have dinner with you or whatever. But both are fine. There's nothing wrong with this sentence. But I think personal arrangements would also work very well, maybe even a little better. The next sentence we have, I'm going to have dinner with my mom. What do you guys think? Would we change it, or is that fine the way it is? No, it's, it's, uh, it's correct, uh, because you you make a decision, uh, is a decision already made. Yes, exactly. Very likely it's a decision already made. I think that's the perfect way to say it. And we've got one more. I need to do some reading. What do you guys think of that one? Um, it's cool. I, I don't I don't find any any glitch glitch with it. Me neither. Me neither. This is another example of how we use modals to talk about the future. So even though we didn't discuss it much today, that's a good example of using modals to talk about the future. All right. Number two. So this one was intentions for the rest of the year. What tenses do you guys expect we will see here? Uh, planning like going to. Okay, so maybe a general future intention or a prediction when you can see the evidence. Maybe, maybe. What else? Anything else? Well, also we can use well plus an infinitive. Sure. Promises. What? Yeah. Yeah, Promises, it could be a promise. Right? or even a decision made at the time of speaking. A lot of you guys said, oh, I don't know, I, I don't really have that much. So maybe if you're making something up on the spot, like you're like, oh, shoot, she's asking me for uh, my plans. I have to come up with something. You might use a decision made at the time of speaking. So that's another possibility. Let's look at the sentences. I would like to stay there for one month. So what do we have in that sentence? A uh, modal, I would. Yeah, yeah, we've got a modal there. A great sentence. I will have a long vacation. What do we think of that one? It's correct uh, because it's a prediction, maybe. A prediction based on no evidence, you think? Uh, a prediction. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, it's uh, more correct going to when uh, it's a prediction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would when probably you can, change this one. Uh, yes, you can see the evidence because uh, you you have to um, plan to to do uh, a long vacation. So I'm going to to have a long vacation, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So you might be able to justify it the way it is. I would probably change it, like you said. So. I will have a long vacation. It probably wouldn't be a decision made at the time of speaking because yes. we've only got a couple more months in the rest of the year. And if you're going on vacation, you probably would already have had to plan it. Yes, it could be a, both a way of thinking. It depends on what you think about about that. Uh, if you said uh, at, at the time of uh, speaking, is correct. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. We've only got a but few I, more. I, oh, yeah. Go ahead. But I, I think teacher, she meant uh, 
she meant like I would like to have a long vacation. She meant that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we could sport. definitely change yeah. it to that, and it would work really well. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we don't have a lot of time left. I've got to close this class because I've got another one, and I've been having a little trouble switching from class to class recently because of my stupid Windows 10, I think. So I'm just going to go over and brush over the next ones a little bit. We'll live on the moon would be a prediction based on no evidence. Possible, but not likely, since it's 2020 is really close. Maybe for 2030, though. That would be a, a likelihood. We will live on Mars. I saw a lot of we will here. We will witness. And those are all possible, but usually we'll have a little bit of evidence because 2020 is really close. If you're talking about 2030, you might have less evidence. And we're going to start a civilization there. That could be like a general future intention, not arranged. So I think those look pretty good. We also used a couple modals there. And you guys can assess the rest on your own. All right, guys. Any last minute questions or comments before I close the class? No, teacher. Thank you guys for coming and participating. My next class is a conversational class on relationship words and just talking a little bit about how we navigate those kinds of situations with our language. All right. Hope to Thank see you all soon. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.